everyone, this is Nibiru Watcher, and I've got some pictures and some interesting stuff to show you today that uh, it's a real heavy weight to show this stuff as this thing draws closer and closer, and uh, I'll let you know that I'm, I do have a job, I work lots of overtime, and the very little time that I do have, I make these videos. No advertising and paid for this. So let's just watch this next clip here. This green dot, I believe, to be the surface of Nibiru. But uh, so let's just watch a couple frames here. Couldn't be a spot on lens. Where's the green coming from? It's there in only one frame. It basically disappears. And the next uh, uh, I want to say that this is probably still approaching the visibility with the naked eye now. Uh, the ISO speed is at 200, a little bit high, with a 30 second exposure time. And during that 30 seconds, this may have been the path of this thing as it caught it as it was moving and then disappears. And also check out these... Uh, orange green things of light here that's pretty amazing uh, anyways let's do some next more ones here all this was on the same day in these next photos and we go back to this real quick okay so this was on the 30th august 30th and here was two days later in the same area in germany and we see the same shadowy object Sorry for the slow connection here. The next, we get this total wash out of light, but I'm going to get to that topic next. And why all this gets washed out in light 30 minutes after this event. So this is going to get interesting. So here we have another area in Germany. Over the next couple camera shots, I believe this to be Nibiru and its tail here, which is this classic V shape. And let's watch in these next clips on the same camera what we see here. We can see that it is advancing forward. Look how big this thing is getting. And we can still see its shadow remnant here and then reappearing again. Okay, that is definitely not a spider. We're seeing this on cameras around the world. And unfortunately, we're being obscured with lenses and artificial sunlight in front of the sun. And one in front of the moon in an orbit approximately 400 kilometers of the Earth placed up there like a satellite. So, again, here are some more pictures of this object. And now, we'll make mention, yes, I got a cold. My voice, I can barely talk and make this video. But I believe this is urgent, so pay attention to the end, because it's going to be really important. I've got even more amazing videos. If you're new to this, watch the video from Dave Dobbs. I'm going to show you some clips from him. So the next minute, now I can see that it has in the same shot right before the sighting like is this the uh, fake star attempting to wash out this shadow now and then it goes dim again right did you see that uh-huh well let's look at another camera you want to see that's a lens glitch well here's a different camera again it went dark and at 550 it went mysteriously bright and yet another camera. Total washout in Lake Starnberg. Where's all this light coming from? Light sensors? How does a light sensor light up the sky and the water? Okay. This is happening in outer space. I think it's the fake sun. What could possibly turn off and on that fast? Well, keep watching. So here's yet another camera. Still washing out light. 
at the same time right after this event. And then we see it on this lake here at the same time. So how many cameras have we seen this on? The light just turns off and on. The fact that I proved it on two or more proves it isn't something on the camera. So next, let's go to Dave Dobbs' channel. I love this guy. Now he makes a prediction here. And he has the best videos I have ever seen in a bureau from the ground. In this particular shot, this is Dave Dobbs' channel. I'll leave a link. But in here, he sets that this was taken on March 28th. It was posted on the 29th of 2016. Now, in his video, he's saying it is a roughly a 200-day orbit. Nero is in a 200-day orbit around Nemesis. And it, on the 200th day at particular dates, it is the closest approach to the Earth that we could see it. This one was published on 2008. Now, excuse me, March 28, 2016. Now, you count 200 days from that day. You're going to get March 14th, excuse me, October 14th, 2016. Now Dave Dobb, for some reason, says that it's going to happen on October 27th. So in all his movies and predictions, there's a little leniency. One, two, three days, a week off. But some very interesting thing happens with within the 200-day cycle. So I just want to make mention of that on this video. So here's some sample videos of some pretty stunning dates that were set. Let's just watch a couple. There's one. 200 days later. So he compiled these videos from around the world. You really need to see this stuff. This is for real. And yet another video captured. Yeah. This guy's got the best videos on the internet. I've seen them all. This guy's got it the best. And he even gets an orbital chart, which is very similar to mine, showing how this thing has an orbit. And it, again, here's the seven sighting. And he explains the tap cycle. Now. Matthew Rogers got another shot of you the scene with the green tail. I'm on a hill. This was like roughly a month ago. You can see uh, them about going two down. or three weeks ago. Fantastic. Okay, next I've got core pictures that was sent to me by one of my subscribers. And this may help explain the flickering sun and why we have a fake sun, not only to hide the unexpected solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, but look at this sun flicker. How was that possible? Well, yeah, it's possible because we've been lied to again. It is an electric universe. This is not a thermonuclear reaction. This is an electric sun. And it's being short-circuited by the nemesis star. It gets its energy from Berkeley currents from other galaxies. If you want to know how that all works, do some investigation on the electric universe. Yeah, we've been lied to in so many ways. Look at that thing flicker. Thought you'd like that. Yeah. Look at that thing. It's being short-circuited. It's probably going through its, uh, what do you call that? It endothermic reaction before it goes back into its exothermic reaction. So please like, copy, and share this video. And for all you believers out there, I'll see you at the Lord's Supper. Have a blessed day.